Okay, so today we're gonna get started on our backs. We're just gonna be working through a full body vinyasa flow today. So go ahead and extend the legs out long, arms up overhead, touching the ground. We'll start with banana asana. So what you'll do here, take your right hand and just grab your left wrist and you're gonna place your right ankle over your left ankle and gently guide both of those over towards the right side of the mat. So you should be making like a banana shape or a crescent moon shape. And as you breathe in here, really focus on elongating the left side body and the rib cage. Shoulders don't necessarily have to be on the mat here. And don't go any further than you need since we're just starting off, so we're warming up the body. Maybe you close your eyes. If you like to set an intention for your practice, now would be a good time to do so. Maybe I am present, I am grateful. A couple more rounds here by yourself. Two more deep breaths. Big inhale here. And as we exhale, we'll come back to center and simply switching sides. <clears throat> so now our left hand should be grabbing that right wrist. And then again, our left ankle is going to cross over the right. And simply guide them both over towards the left corners of the mat. I know in my body, one side may be able to deepen into this pose. So I'm going over to the left side of the room a little bit deeper than I was on my right, which is totally okay. Awesome, just keep breathing here. Do about three more rounds by yourself. Just your normal breath right now. We won't focus on any ujjayi, pranayama just yet. Three more rounds. And as you finish up that last one, we'll meet in center, bringing our knees into our chest finding just a gentle hug. Feel free to sway from side to side, massaging out the lower back. And just doing a quick body scan here. Okay, gently with this inhale. And then as we exhale, we'll place our knees over to the right side of the room. Our gaze will be towards the left. Now arms can be cactus here or out to a T, finding a supine twist. Trying to keep both the shoulder blades grounded to the mat here. And if it doesn't feel too good to gaze over to the left side of the room, you can always gaze up towards the ceiling. And if you're ever looking for assistance here, go ahead and bring that right hand and place it just gently on the left thigh, inviting it over just a little bit more. And again, feeling up into the rib cage. You can always straighten out the legs as well here. They don't necessarily have to stay bent. Okay, and on our next inhale, we'll bring the knees back to center and then we'll simply switch sides. So gaze will be towards the right and our knees will fall towards the left side of the mat. Big inhale, opening up that right side body. and using that left hand this time for assistance with the right thigh if that's needed. About three more rounds here. And on that next inhale, we'll bring the knees back to center. 
and we'll grab the outer edge blades of the feet for happy baby. So here we are pushing um, the knees down towards the mat, inviting the thighs out just a little bit wider and the knees should be wider than the armpits here. I definitely like to move in my poses here, so if that's something that's calling to you, you can always sway from side to side, really trying to ground the tailbone into the mat here, so don't let those hips raise. Keeping the shoulder blades firm to the ground, chin towards the sky. and see what else is calling for you today. So you can always elongate one leg at a time as you sway to your left and right. Maybe both legs go out straight for a moment or towards the sky as well. And if you're feeling static, happy baby today, it's definitely okay. And if you are moving here, we'll come back to center and remain still for just a moment. And then we'll bring our knees back into our chest one more time and begin to just rock the length of your mat, massaging out the spine. And after a few rocks here, finding enough momentum to cross at the ankles and find a neutral tabletop. So here we want our shoulders over our wrist and our hips over our knees. And we'll just find a few rounds of cat-cow. So as we inhale, we're going to drop the belly, shift the gaze towards the sky, push the chest through. And then as you exhale, really push away at the mat, rounding the shoulder blades, chin to the chest. And then again, inhale up towards the sky. Gaze will always be last here. And exhale, round chin to chest. Now, if I'm ever going too fast or too slow for you, I definitely invite you to move at your own pace. So you should link these cat and cows to your inhalations and your exhalations. Letting any intuitive movement come in as well. So maybe you round the hips, barrel roll the belly. Maybe you find a child's pose and come back up. And we'll complete about Four more rounds here by ourselves, and then we'll meet in our neutral tabletop. Last one here. Okay, finding that neutral tabletop, right away we're going to tuck the toes, lift the hips and knees for downward facing dog. Now begin to walk out the heels here. So maybe you bend one knee and then the other. The heels definitely do not have to touch the mat, it's just the direction they're always going. Really ground down in between that thumb and pointer finger. So it helps push the chest towards the thighs. Maybe you sway the hips from side to side. And what always helps me, I know with my inhales, my spine is allowed to lengthen. And then as I exhale, I just simply imagine melting my heart towards my thighs. Okay, here we'll inhale the right leg up. And then as we exhale, let's place it to the top of our mat in between both hands. We'll gently place the left knee down, finding low lunge. Now back toes can remain tucked or you can just place the top of the foot on the mat as well. We want to keep the knee over the ankle in that top foot. And as we inhale, our arms will shape our ears. Gaze is towards the front of the mat as well. Now you really don't want to dump in, so keep a core activation here as you push your hips forward. If you're wanting more from the stretch as well, you can tuck the back toes, gently lift the knees here, and just place it a little bit further back. If your arms are feeling a little heavy today as well, you can always interlace the hands and place them on the right thigh and just find a gentle push here. So it's like the cat action we found as we push away and separate the shoulder blades. And steady breathing here. Last inhale. 
And then as we exhale, our hands will meet our mat. We'll tuck the back toes and bring our right foot back to downward facing dog just for a moment. Inhale that left foot up. And as we exhale, we'll place it to the top of our mat, finding low lunge. So remembering to keep that left knee stacked over the left ankle and just a steady gaze towards the front of the mat, keeping the neck long. And we want the spine long and protected as well, so we want to make sure we're tucking that tailbone in. A few more rounds here. And again, letting those hips melt towards the front of the room. Last big inhale. And as we exhale, our palms will come back to the mat. We'll tuck that back toe and find our downward facing dog. So we're gonna go through a couple sun A's to warm up the body, and I'll definitely cue the modifications for this as well. So starting here, let's lift the heels, bend the knees, and just walk towards the top of your mat. Let's inhale, halfway lift to a flat spine, and as we exhale, we'll fold. Now grabbing opposite elbows and finding a micro bend in the knee, we'll find ragdoll here. So we keep that micro bend in the knee to protect the lower back. And this is a pose that you want gravity to do the work, right? You want a heavy torso, heavy head. Maybe you shake out the neck from left to right, yes and no. And let those elbows get heavy. Finding some gentle sways. All right, releasing those hands here. We're gonna inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Biggest inhale here as we root to rise, palms up and overhead, and then down to heart center on our exhale. Big inhale here, arm shape of the sun. And as we exhale, we'll hinge at the hips and fold forward. Another big inhale, halfway lift, and as we exhale, we'll plant the palms and step back, finding plank. Now immediately here in plank, if this is just not calling to you today, feel free to lower the knees down. You're definitely getting the same workout. But if you are with me with knees up, really push away at the mat, rounding the back, and feel strong on the balls of both feet here. And we're working out our entire body. Just find a steady gaze, keeping the neck long. And just come back to your breath. We won't be here for too much longer. Two more breaths. Last one. And as you exhale, ride the exhale all the way down so your belly will meet the mat. Keeping the hands where they are, we'll inhale for a baby cobra. So hands stay on the mat. And then we'll exhale, head to the mat. This time, let's bring our hands out to the outsides of the mat. Maybe we'll be on our fingertips here as well. And then we'll inhale for a bigger cobra. Maybe we straighten those arms. And then exhale down. Going at your own pace here, inhale to your cobra. And exhale. Big inhale here. Now your arms definitely don't have to straighten. And when I say exhale, you don't even have to exhale. If this feels good for you and you want to stay and experiment and marinate in this cobra, definitely feel free to. And then exhale. Okay, bringing those palms back to the mat. We'll inhale up to plank, maybe going to table hop first, and exhale to downward facing dog. Right away, we'll inhale, heels up, bend those knees, step or hop to the top of our mat. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Big inhales, you root to rise, palms up overhead, and exhale, palms to heart center, and to our sides. Big inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or hop back, finding our plank. And then we'll go down to chaturanga. So start to bend the arms, keep those elbows tucked in towards the rib cage. And as we inhale, we'll find an upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. So we'll go through that about two more times. Inhale, heels up. And exhale, step or hop to the top of your mat. Big inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. 
And exhale, palms to heart center and to our side. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or hop back, going through your vinyasa. So that could mean the chaturanga, or maybe it means cobra. Or maybe you meet us in downward facing dog. All right, one more time here, guys. Inhale, heels raise. Exhale, we bend those knees. Step or hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Big inhale, arms up, up, overhead. And exhale, fold. Last one here. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or hop through your vinyasa. Meeting in downward facing dog. Now we'll be in downward facing dog for a few breaths here. Um, you can definitely stay in here as a resting pose, but child's pose is always there for you as well. So if you're going down to child's pose, just bring the knees to the outsides of both mat or if you're going in child's pose, just bring the knees to the outer edges of both sides of the mat. Spider crawl the arms up and just let the hips get heavy towards the heels. If you are home, this would be a good time to grab some water, grab a towel. Okay, and when you're ready here, we'll meet in Downward Facing Dog. And we're going to inhale that right foot up towards the sky. And as we exhale, we'll place it to the top of our mat. Staying strong on the ball mount of the back foot, we're going to rise for Crescent here. So here in Crescent, if you're feeling any, if you're not feeling a good balance, just extend the width of the stance towards both, both edges of the mat. You want to remain strong on the ball mount of that back foot, so really press that heel up and aligning it directly over those left toes. Now we want to square the hips here as well, so gently invite the left hip forward as you push the right hip back. And as we activate our core, our tailbone will, taste, will stay tucked in here as well. And we just gaze towards the front of the room. Work on bringing the pinkies in towards each other as we wrap the arms. So palms will be facing each other as well. Big inhale and exhale. Inhale to keep that straight spine. And then as you exhale, you can lunge deeper into that front knee. And if at any time this is too much for you, simply just slowly lower that back knee towards the ground here. Big inhale, you're doing great. And then exhale. Let's do one more big inhale here. And as we exhale, we're going to drop the back heel down towards the mat, opening up for warrior two. So again, we do have a traditional heel to arch alignment here. But if that's not working for you today, just find a place that makes you feel steady and strong. We want to work on sealing the outer edge blade of that left foot to the mat as we lunge into that front knee here too. Arms will be out towards a T. And we want our hips to be squared towards the long edge of the mat here as well. Keeping that same core activation that we had in Crescent here too. And you'll gaze over that front right hand. Don't forget to soften those shoulder blades away. Steady gaze, deep breath. Okay, keeping our bottom half exactly as is, we're going to inhale and reverse our warrior. And exhale back to warrior two. Another big inhale, reverse that warrior. And exhale, warrior two. So finding goddess as our next pose, we're going to bring our left heel in so it's facing our right heel. Toes should be out pointing towards the corners of the mat. I immediately start swaying in this pose. I think it's just so I forget that I'm in a squatting position. Now your heels should be on the mat here too. If they're not, just widen the stance. If you have your heels raised like this, definitely okay. If you want to invite that added challenge, but it's not necessary today. So working on that squat position, we're gonna have our arms cactus here as well. So elbows pointed towards the ground. And we wanna work on pushing our 
hips forward as we pull our thighs back. And again, if this arm variation isn't working for you today, you can always bring your palms to heart center as well. And just find a steady gaze here. Swing if it helps you remain present in this pose is always acceptable. A few more breaths here, guys. And big inhale, and then as you exhale, try to sink a little bit deeper into this pose. Okay, here, now we're gonna pivot on the ball mound of the right foot. So we're gonna find crescent to the back of our mat here. So we've already been here once. So making sure we have that steady balance, steady gaze, and our arms are lifted, framing our ears. Keeping that back heel long and aligned over those back toes. Finding a smile if you're not having the best time. Big inhale and exhale. One more deep breath here, so big inhale. And as we exhale, our palms will meet the mat and we'll go through your vinyasa. Inhaling to upward facing dog and exhaling downward facing dog. Now just coming back to your breath here for a moment. Pushing away at the mat, melting the chest towards the thighs. And here, this time we'll inhale, raise that left foot up and long towards the sky. And as we exhale, we're gonna place it to the back of the mat, rising for crescent. Now again, finding a good, wide and steady stance here. Squaring those hips towards the back of the mat. So we're gonna push that back, left hip back as we pull the right hip forward. Just a few breaths here. And I always like to try to remember as we inhale, that's when we can lengthen this entire pose out. And then as you exhale, if it's calling to you, just deep or bend deeper into that front knee. Two more breaths. We know where we're going from here, so we're gonna find goddess again. So we're gonna pivot that right heel in, point those toes back out, and just find a simple sway. So again, finding that squat position that works for you. And hands don't necessarily have to be at a cactus here again. You can always bring them to heart center, or you can bring them on the thighs as well. I like to do other little subtle movements in this pose. So maybe you roll your neck out, or maybe you just close your eyes and be grateful for the sensations we're feeling. Okay, last breath here, big inhale. And then as we exhale, we're gonna pivot and find crescent to the front of our mat here. So we're gonna pivot on the back ball mount of the left foot. Big inhale, and exhale, sink into it. Really pushing that back heel up, tucking that tailbone in. And exhale, palms to the mat. Step or hop back, going through your vinyasa. And we'll meet in downward facing dog. You're doing great. So we're gonna do that about two more times on each side and we'll add a few more movements in there as well. So we'll go a little bit faster here, linking breath to movement. In the poses I do add though, we'll stay in there for a moment. So let's inhale, lift that right foot up and exhale to the top of the mat for crescent. Finding that steady gaze and immediately just finding a good firm foundation here. Big inhale. And as we exhale, let's bring our palms to heart center. And we're gonna find a twist. So as we inhale, and then as we exhale, we'll place that left elbow on our right knee, really pushing away at both palms. So you're trying to get your palms right in between your sternum here. And always remember we can just kneel down on that back leg as well. Gaze can be towards the top of the mat, or if you want to play with your balance here, you can always gaze towards the back of the room. Just two more breaths here, guys. 
Big inhale and exhale. Now we'll inhale back to our crescent and then we'll exhale, we'll open up for warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Big inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, warrior two. Okay, we'll pivot finding that goddess here again. So bring both heels in as a toes point out. Inhale. And exhale, settle in. Big inhale here. And we'll inhale to the back of our mat, spinning on the ball mound of the back foot for crescent. Big inhale. Exhale, palms meet at heart center. And then we'll twist. So there's a few variations you can take as well. So you can keep the traditional prayer pose, or you can extend both arms up and long. You're doing great. Two more breaths. And on your next exhale, simply place the right hand on the mat and you'll find a twist. So keep that left arm up and long. Maybe you come down on that back knee as well. Really don't sink into that right arm here. Just simply let it support your twist. Gaze is towards the back of the mat. If you did place that back leg down, tuck those toes and lift that back leg again. And we're gonna gently bring our left foot, guys, to find side plank. So you're gonna stack that over your right foot as well. Ankle stacked, hip stacked, shoulder is still over our wrist. And just gaze towards the mat. Now here in side plank, the goal is to really Push those hips up, up, and away from the mat. If this is ever too much for you, if you're feeling a little too unsteady, you don't necessarily have to stack the feet. They can both be on the mat as well. Or the bottom foot, so the right foot here, you can always bring that knee down here too. Really work on elongating that side body as well as we push the hips up and away. Last breath. And as we exhale, we'll go through our vinyasa. Inhaling for upward facing dog. And exhaling to downward facing dog. Awesome, guys. We'll do that one more, or one more round on our left side. So inhale, extend the left leg up and long. And as we exhale, we'll place the left foot to the top of our mat, rising for crescent. So we should be at the back of our mat here still. Big inhale, and exhale, settle in. Big inhale, and exhale, palms to heart center, and we'll find our twist, so this time our right elbow will be on our left knee. Big inhale, up back to crescent. And as we exhale, we'll open up to warrior two, spinning that back heel down. We'll inhale, reverse our warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Big inhale, last reverse here. And exhale, back to warrior two. One last inhale. And exhale. All right, we'll find that goddess again, so let's pivot that right heel in, toes out. And here with our hands this time, let's place them on our thighs and we're gonna push away so we'll find an added twist with our torso. So with our left hand, push away, bring that elbow towards the mat and maybe we gaze over towards the right toe. Inhaling back to center and switching sides. Okay, big inhale back to goddess, arms as a cactus. And then as we exhale, we'll slowly find crescent to the top of our mat, spinning on the back ball mound of the back foot. Big inhale, and exhale, settle in. Last inhale, and as we exhale, palms will meet at heart center, and then find your twist. So that left elbow should be on the right knee here, and gaze can be towards the back of the room. Two more breaths, guys. 
And on that last exhale, place that left hand down here now and we'll find that same twist. So right arm up towards the sky. And again, we can bring that back leg or that back knee down rather if we'd like. Or you can keep it tucked. Two more breaths. Big inhale. And as we exhale, let's move into that side plank. So again, I'll go over those variations here, but traditional side plank, you have everything stacked. Ankles, hips, shoulders. And you're working on pushing those hips up and away towards the mat. If balance is not your friend today, simply keep both feet on the mat. Or you can go all the way to the knee of the left leg. And we'll be here for a few moments. Two more rounds. And on that last exhale, we'll come back to center, both palms on the mat, and we'll flow through our last vinyasa here. Kneading and downward facing dog. Awesome. We'll be here for a few rounds. Really pushing away coming back to our normal pace of breath if that did get lost, closing the eyes. Crawl the hands back to meet the feet and we'll bend at the knees finding a yogi squat. So if you have some difficulty with your squat, the first thing I would suggest is placing a black or something that resembles a black under your bum here. If you're working on trying to get those heels down, maybe you just widen your stance. Having the palms at heart center, you can use both elbows to really push away at the knees here too. And we want to keep our spine straight and long, no hunching in. Maybe you find again some movement here. I think we're going to learn very quickly that I like to move in all my poses. From here, we'll place the right arm on the outskirts of the mat and we'll extend the left arm up long, finding just a nice opening of the chest. If you are working on a, a bind or a bind is in your practice, you can start rotating that right arm to meet the left at the back and find a bind, or find the clasp rather. And we'll release that bind if you do have one. Coming back to center and switching sides. So we'll place our left hand on the outside of the mat and we'll extend our right arm up and long towards the sky. And finding that bind if you did so on the other side. Releasing that bind and coming back to center. We'll just extend the legs up straight and we'll find another rag doll here. Now you don't really necessarily have to grab opposite el elbows if you don't want to. Palms are always welcome on the ground as well. Fingertips. An added shoulder opener here would be interlacing the hands at the lower back and then pushing them up and over towards the front of the mat. Never going further than what your body is needing today, so it should never hurt. You should definitely have a slight sensation, yes, but no pain. If you do have that bind, you can release now, and we'll walk back out to our downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, we'll place the knees onto the mat, and we'll simply just move over so we have our bum on the mat, our legs extended out long. Okay, flexing the heels, or I'm sorry, flexing the toes towards the face. We'll inhale, arms up. And as we exhale, let's lead with our navel, lead with our, lead with our chest for this forward fold. So I say lead with the navel and the chest here because you don't, there's always a tendency to want to hunch into the fold so you can bow deeper. That's really not doing any, 
any good for you. So work on spider crawling the hands towards the front of the mat and think about melting the navel towards the thigh rather than the chest towards the shins. Big inhale to elongate that spine again. And then as you exhale, if you have the space, begin to just bow deep. As we cool down our body, just continue to remember all the amazing things you just did for the last 30, 35 minutes or so. So just really take it easy here and don't work any more than you need to. And we'll inhale back up and we'll just do arms overhead and exhale palms to heart center. So we're gonna find another forward fold, but this time we're gonna have a little wide leg forward fold. So you can stay facing the front of your mat it may be more comfortable to face the longer edge of your mat so the legs can remain there. And same thing here, you wanna inhale, arms up, and then as we exhale, we'll spider crawl the hands off the mat, finding another fold. This time opening up the hips. Toes can be flexed or pointed. If the ground is far away today, you can always have blacks under your forearms as well. And inhaling back up to center. If you are facing the long edge of your mat, just come back towards the front and go all the way down to your backs. So we're gonna go through two back bends here. We're gonna start off with bridge. So in bridge pose, you wanna bring your heels up towards the bum, so you should be able to graze the Achilles tendon with your fingers. We'll do one more big inhale to just clear it all out. And then exhale, let it all go. And on your next inhale, just begin to slowly lift up the hips, pushing away at the mat with the feet. Activating the glutes here. Most of the work is coming from the legs. If you are up, maybe you can now roll the shoulder blades back and towards each other, finding a bind as you push away, chest up towards the sky. Big inhale. And exhale, let it go. Biggest inhale here. And as we exhale, we'll release back to our mat. So with our last back bend of the day, you can go into that same bridge pose. If wheel pose is in your practice, feel free to go there as well. If you are doing wheel, you're gonna have your palms, so your fingertips are gonna be facing the back of the mat, palms heavy on the mat as well. And then as you inhale, you're gonna push up, up, Inviting the chest through the arms, and pushing it towards the back of our mat. Just how in bridge pose I mentioned, your legs are doing most of the work. Here in wheel, it's the same idea. So really ground the heels in, activating the glutes. Be here for just a few breaths. And when you are ready, we'll come back to the mat. And we'll bring our knees back into our chest. Okay, we're gonna find reclined pigeon here. So keeping the left leg bent, we're gonna bring the right ankle over the left thigh, finding a figure four shape. Arms can be, or I'm sorry, hands rather can interlace at the back of the left thigh. And if you do have that bind, begin to push with your right elbow, I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> begin to push with your right elbow to the inner right thigh. Now that left foot, those toes should be flexed towards the face. You don't want that to just be lazy and kind of not doing anything. Just close your eyes. Really settling in, coming back to that normal pace of breath. I'm gonna be here for about two more rounds and then we'll switch sides. Mm 
Last inhale. And exhale as we switch sides. So now we're gonna have our left ankle over our right knee. And we'll find that same bind behind the right thigh. A few more breaths. Now, releasing that reclined pigeon, let's extend both legs up towards the sky, flexing the heels towards the face for legs up the wall. Now, with the energy we've created from this class today, you can keep your palms up towards the, towards the sky to receive more energy, or if you're feeling more of a grounding force, just place those palms towards the ground. Eyes can be closed here. Neck stays long. Now feel free to keep the uh, toes flexed toward the face, or you can always roll out the ankles here as well. If plow is in your practice here, you can move there now. Um, if you've never attempted plow, definitely give it a try. I would say use both hands as an assistant. So in plow, you're gonna bring your toes over your head and you can always bring the hands towards the back, the lower back here to gently guide the toes closer towards the back of the mat. Now your feet don't have to touch the ground. Um, if they are still over and up, you're definitely in the pose. and eventually making your way to ear pressure pose. So bringing the shins to the outside of both ears, both temples. And then releasing, coming back to your backs on the mat. We're gonna find just a simple twist here. So bring those knees into the chest. And as we exhale, we'll place them to the right and gaze over to the left finding that same supine twist we started with class today. I really like to begin and end with the twist so you can see how much more space or how much more open your body has become. Inhaling back to center and we'll exhale to switch sides. This will be our last pose today before we find Savasana. So if there is anything else calling to you today, now would be the time to enter that. And if you're still with me in the supine twist, we're gonna inhale those knees up to our center. Give it one last big, big squeeze. And then we'll exhale and release everything and get heavy and long on our mat. So get comfy here, so knees out wide, feet towards the corners of the mat. If you have the room, maybe your arms are out to a T as well, or over the head. Just keep those eyes closed here and feel heavy. Shoulders heavy, hips heavy, back of the thighs, calves, and just let it all go.
And from here, we will start to invite subtle movements back into the body. So maybe you start with wiggling the toes and the fingers, shaking the head from left to right. Eventually finding maybe a good morning stretch, arms up and overhead, pointing the toes. And when you are ready, you can find the fetal position either to the left or the right of the mat, or you can stay on your back as well. And trying to keep those eyes closed, we'll come up to a seated position at the top of our mat, bringing the palms to heart center. We'll do one more collective inhale. And sighing out to let it all go. It's always my honor to guide you through this practice. And I hope to see you again. So we'll bring our palms to our third eye. Big inhale. And exhale. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed this flow. And I hope you feel good and ready for the rest of your day or evening. And I hope to see you again.